Welcome to the Green Building Show, where we investigate green design and building trends throughout Australia. In this series of the Green Building Show, we'll be looking at passive design. We'll be concentrating on passive solar design and thermal mass. What do these design principles mean? How do they work? And how are they beneficial to the homeowner and the environment? We'll be looking at how passive design principles can heat and cool a home. We'll be speaking to architect Oliver Steele and research director at the Institute for Sustainable Futures, Caitlin McGee, to get their insights into passive design. So what is passive design? A passively designed house is a house that has been designed to have a synergy with its immediate environment. The design principles utilise the natural sources of sun and wind to heat and cool a home. In Australia, our heating and cooling costs account for around 40% of our energy bills. That percentage is even greater in the hottest and coldest parts of the country. Passive design is, is essentially about designing a building so that you don't need active heating or cooling. So it's really the idea of working with the climate to make your home as comfortable as possible so that you're not going to need to heat or, heat or cool it. Or if you do, it's going to be minimal. So that's what passive design is in a nutshell. So passive design is the design of the fixed building elements or the, the non-active building elements such as uh, walls, windows, roof, insulation, all those sorts of things. It's about using the right combination of heavyweight and lightweight materials. Um, so it's, there's a whole lot of different elements that, that come into play with passive design. But it's really about, I suppose it's um, really about thinking about your building layout and planning and then your building shell materials if you want to sort of um, summarise it there, the, those aspects you have to be thought about to achieve good passive design. It's called passive because you don't have to use active sources like heaters, fires or air conditioners to make your home comfortable. We asked Oliver and Caitlin to talk us through passive solar design. So passive design is really about passive solar design which is utilising the available solar energy to make the occupants comfortable uh, and exclude excess solar energy. It's not, it's probably a bit of a misnomer because it's not 100% passive in the sense that the house will do the work for you but you sort of have to understand how it works and make sure that you, for example, if you've got shading that you operate it correctly so that you actually remember to have the shading in place in summer and then um, you know like get rid of it in winter or whether it's kind of opening up louvers or whatever shading you've had designed you need to remember to um, if you've designed your house for natural ventilation in summer to make sure that you do. And essentially there's a very simple principle at play which is if this is a house sitting on a block and that's north in in summer the sun rises from behind east and travels up very high, about 87 degrees from, from the horizontal and is really beating down on the top of the house in the middle of the day and then travels down and sets south of west and so you get that kind of afternoon sun hanging around and just beating in on the western windows uh, and then in winter the sun rises north of east and only gets up to about 31 degrees, as in Sydney, and come, comes in at a kind of nice low angle and then drops down and sets north of west. So there's very different um, arc that the sun is describing in summer and winter. And passive design is all about using building elements to capture the winter sun on, the, on that low angle and exclude the summer sun on that high angle and when it's beating in on the east and west. So for example a, a small awning over a north facing window will allow the low hanging winter sun to flood right in and give you a beautiful um, sunny room in winter whereas when the summer sun travels over very high in the sky the, the rays hit the awning and the window remains shaded. So <clears throat> that, that's why a north facing window is preferable to an east or west facing window because on the west especially 
you might have a, a bit of nice, sun, nice winter afternoon sun coming in, but then when summer rolls around, you've got those, you know, from 3 to 6 p.m. sometimes, just really beating right in and heating up your whole house after what's already been a hot day. In the next episode of The Green Building Show, we'll be looking at using passive solar design around Australia's varied climates.